Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Trey and today I'll be giving you a masterclass speedrun on Jinx. Jinx is a really popular champ at the moment, but even when she's not in the meta, her insane scaling makes her a great hyper carry that every ADC main should have in their bag. Trust me, when your team's lacking damage and you really need to be THE carry, she won't let you down. In this guide, compiled by some of the best league players in the world, I'll talk about everything you need to know. By the end of this, you'll know the right build, what supports go best with Jinx, what combos and mechanics you need to learn, how to play the different phases of the game, and some other extra tips and tricks to help you on your climb. If you like what you see in this video, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. We're working on guides like this for every champ, adding on to our already huge list of over 500 Masterclass courses put together by top-level pros and streamers. A pro account costs only $7.99 a month, and since we now bill monthly, you can cancel that anytime you want. That's already a crazy good deal, but to sweeten it even more, we decided that we'll be doing RP giveaways for our subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a nice little bag of 11,525 RP. Entering takes just three quick steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for a pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username down in the comments section. You won't find a better deal anywhere, so what are you waiting for? Go pro now. Alright, let's get on with this guide. Even with perfect gameplay, if you're building wrong, you're not going to carry as hard as you should, so let's talk about that first. Small disclaimer though, League's meta shifts a lot, so this portion could definitely change by the time you're watching the video. But as of right now, the best runes for Jinx are Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm. You could also run Cutdown over Coup if the enemy team has two or more very tanky frontliners for you to deal with. Your tertiary runes should be Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Health. For your items, you'll want to start with Doran's Blade, then build into Stormraiser and Berserker's Greaves. You can go Tier 2 Boots first if you need the extra movement speed in lane, or just have the right amount of gold on a recall. Next up, you'll grab your Mythic, which is always Infinity Edge, then build into either Runon's Hurricane or Rapid Fire Cannon. Prior to the 13.10 item rework, you would always go Phantom Dancer for single target damage or Hurricane for AoE damage, but Storm Razor gives a ton of movement speed now, so you want to be able to get off that energized attack anytime it's up, making RFC incredibly valuable. You should still consider Hurricane if you'll be hitting two melee champs in teamfights, and definitely go with that if the enemy team has three or more melee champs. Whichever option you go with, your next two items will pretty much always be Bloodthirster and Lord Dominic's regards, or if no one else has Grievous on your team, Mortal Reminder. Let's start with the super obvious. Of course, any hyper carry is going to go great for Lulu. Her ult and shield add a lot of extra durability in fights, and she has loads of peel in her kit. And when you don't need to be peeled, she still works great with you. W's attack speed increase and Pix's extra attacks give you loads of damage, while the movement speed she grants makes it much easier for you to chase down opponents. Now, did you know that there's a support that goes even better with Jinx and Lulu? Everyone thinks hyper carries must be played with an enchanter. And while that can make you feel like a god when you're just mowing down everyone in the game, Thress is actually the absolute best partner for Jinx. Jinx doesn't actually have that weak of a lane phase. She does pretty good damage in extended fights even early on, so you can make good use of Thresh's lane aggression pretty well. Jinx's traps are normally a defensive tool early on, but with Thresh, you can chain them with his CC to use them on the offensive too. But lane phase isn't the only part of this equation. Where Thresh really starts to synergize with you is in teamfights. His ability to chain CC opponents means he can both lock down kills for you and peel for you in teamfights really well. More importantly, there's his Lantern. If you get Jarvan ulted with Flashdown, no enchanter could save you from a full team of five enemy champs jumping on you. But Thresh is able to easily bail you out of that almost certain death. The next best support we have for you would probably be Annie. She gives a good amount of trading potential in lane, especially post-6, and goes on to enable you pretty well in fights. The movement speed from her E helps you get around until you get excited, and her CC can provide a pretty good amount of peel, especially whenever she builds into Rylai's. While Lulu, Thresh, and Annie are pretty much the three best lane partners for Jinx, she can honestly do pretty well with a lot of different champs. Mage's lane dominance can give you free farm early on, you can go in with kill lane supports, and enchanters typically scale hardest with you in teamfights. Now, for some Jinx-specific mechanics and combos. Being a hyper carry, most of her kit revolves around right-clicking foes and positioning well, but there are a few things that you may not be aware of. 
Jinx's first attack after swapping from Pow Pow to Fishbones will benefit from her attack speed stacks from using the minigun. Casting Jinx's W can feel a bit clunky due to the long cast time early on, but the cast speed scales with attack speed. So if you have max lethal tempo stacks or you're excited, you'll be able to use it much smoother in fights. Alternatively, you can W flash to break out of the animation lock. If you want to hide your ult's cast, use your E first, then immediately press R. Lastly, you probably know that Jinx's ult does more damage the further it flies, but it doesn't need to go half the map to ramp all the way up. In fact, it doesn't have to go very far at all. Alt reaches max damage at exactly the end of W's range, so if someone is just at the tip of W's range, you can use a W, R, Flash auto combo to finish them off in a chase. Honestly, just being good at basic mechanics like orb walking and avoiding skill shots will make you a really good Jinx player, but integrating some of these extra things will take things up a notch. Okay, we've talked about builds and little tricks you can do with Jinx, now let's look at the game plan. As with any hyper carry, Jinx's number one objective is scaling. She spikes pretty well at two items and then really hard at three. So as a very general statement, your main goal is to farm out lane and make it to the mid game in one piece. But take that with a grain of salt, because like I said earlier, she can definitely hard win in the right matchups. But let's focus on more neutral and hard matchup for this, since those are probably ones you need more help in. The number one rule is good wave management. When you're playing in a mobile champ, the last thing you want to do is give your opponents a freeze that you can't break. It puts the lane in a spot where you are 1. open to being jumped on by your lane opponents, and 2. being ganked by the enemy jungler. Messing up the wave and dying early on can make it impossible to play the rest of lane out, and you'll need the game to go really late to catch back up. Of course, if you're clueless on how to manage waves, we've got your back. We've got guides for that on our YouTube channel and masterclass courses at ProGuides.com. But for now, the main tip I have for you for managing waves is to avoid mindlessly using your fish bones to get CS. It can be tempting to use the bonus range to make it safer, but you'll also splash other minions in the process. If you're just trying to hard shove for a reset, that's great, but if you're not able to fully crash the wave, you'll end up in one of those aforementioned freezes. Of course, farming isn't all there is to laning. When it comes to trading early on with Jinx, know that her trading pattern is definitely suited to extended fights. She doesn't have any bursty tools, so you don't want to take short trades with champs like Lucian or Misfortune. Obviously, supports play heavily into how possible it is to take fights, so adjust accordingly. The LDR. The early game is all about surviving. Getting fed is a secondary objective here. If you're up against someone that you can force longer fights against like Ezreal, go for it. Otherwise, focus on managing the wave to get through the lane phase and outscale your opponent instead. Once you make it to the mid game, you'll really start to feel your power ramping up. At two items, you have the damage to start doing pretty well in fights, but it's not until three that you start to absolutely annihilate enemies. To reach that point, just make sure that you're not letting your farm slack once lane phase is over. This isn't really Jinx specific advice, but more so just good advice for any carry in general. So many ADC mains complain about how weak their role is because they get one shot by solo laners, but those people are also usually three levels down because they brainlessly run around the map chasing fights. You really need to get into the habit of moving to farm when waves are coming to your side and only grouping up for important fights over objectives. When it finally is time to fight, you'll basically always look to front to back. You really don't have any other way to play 5v5s. If you're flashing in to help kill the backline, obviously you're not going to be in a great spot. That said, you also do want to be a part of backline kills if you can to help get excited quicker. You may think that contradicts what I just said, but don't forget about your global ult. If you see an ally setting up to dive the enemy backline, find an angle to hit their target to help both of you out. Remember, you don't need perfect timing. You don't need to get the kill to get your passive. They just need to die within 3 seconds of your ult hitting them. So to summarize the mid game, keep farming to stay up in gold and XP, group only when you need to for objectives, and in fights, focus on safe positioning over diving in for kills. Once the game goes late, the only way you really lose is Jinx is getting caught out. So, while you still want to keep grabbing farm, be very, very aware of when you're gankable. Your main goal at this point should really shift towards grouping up to siege turrets and force around Baron and Dragon anytime you can. You'll still be fighting front to back, but since you should be at or near full build, you'll shred through tanks pretty quickly at this point. It should go without saying, but when team fighting, just be sure that you're playing around your team. Most people think that their team is supposed to cater to them, and I mean, ideally, they should be the ones to play around you, but it's solo queue. Your LP is your responsibility, so adjust to what your teammates are and aren't doing. The late game spark notes are basically force fights as much as you can, but do them safely. Position near your support so you're always able to get some peel and stick to standard front to backing. 
Jinx has plenty of damage to chew through frontliners first. Alright, before I send you on your way, let's talk about a few more tips. One little tip is to abuse getting excited off of objectives. So many people underestimate just how fast you are and how much damage you do with this. One easy tactic to abuse is to get a tower low, but refrain from actually killing it. Then, once your foe steps up too close, kill the tower and chase them down. Remember, your W casts a lot faster when excited, making it easier to land when you're running down your target. Another bit of advice is to mostly use your rocket launcher in teamfights. The range matters a lot. Minigun gives you a lot more DPS, so it's definitely the right call if you're dealing with a tank or some other diver in the backline, but usually, rockets are the way. As always, usual grain of salt disclaimer. League is very dynamic, so there's going to be some exceptions. The last thing is to be really conscious of your trap placement. As I've already said a few times, Jinx is completely immobile. Until you get excited, you're a pretty slow, easy target. Aside from her range, the only way you have to stay safe is your traps. Your traps have a long cooldown. You'll probably only get off a single set of them in a fight, so use them well, blocking off a path or at least cutting off most of it and forcing any would-be divers to take the long way around to reach you. And that about wraps things up for our Jinx guide. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see more from us, head on over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content and courses by pros like CoreJJ, DoubleLift, and General Sniper for you to access, and now we're even working on pushing out guides for every champ. All of that for just $7.99, and that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best you'll find anywhere on the market. And with a ProGuide sub, you'll even get discounted rates with them. Trust me, the amount of time you save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything they have to teach you. And of course, there's that sweet, sweet RP giveaway. Again, the link for the site is down in the description box below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching the video. Do let me know what you think down in the comments below. I can't wait to see you guys next time, but until then, good luck out there on the rift. Bye-bye!